Hello Math 120 and this is Professor Gonzalez and I would like to go over, go over some problems in homework assignment 6.7. Now 6.7 um, is a section where we must solve radical or well radical equations. Okay equations with the radical symbol they could be square root, cube roots, third roots which are cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots and so on. Um, that part doesn't matter, but there is something that we kind of need to talk about, and that is the idea of extraneous solutions. Let's start off with just a little example over here on the side, um, and let's uh, start off with this idea, that if I was saying I'm looking for the square root of x, so the square root of x equals, let's say, 5. Now, you might look at that and go, ah, the answer is 25, and you are correct. But mathematically, you know, problems are not always going to be that easy, so we want a system, and the system is this. We know that this is a square root. And what is the inverse or opposite of square rooting? Well, that would be squaring. So squaring is the operation that undoes a square root. So we square both sides of the equation. This gives us, now once again, power matching index out comes the x. That's why we're doing it. And 5 squared is 25. And yes, just like we expected, if we put 25 back in the original problem, <coughs> we will get, right? So we do a check. The original problem was the square root of x equals 5. And we got an answer of 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So 5 equals 5 checks. But there is a problem here. When you square both sides of the equation on this step, it gives you a new equation that has possible solutions to the original equation, but it might actually even have extra solutions. So you have to check. You must do a check when you square both sides of an equation because the answers to that new equation may not all, all of them, some of them might not work, actually. So these two equations are not um, equivalent because um, of a situation that could happen. Let me go ahead and show it to you. So let's, let's have a similar type of problem, but what if it was the square root of x equals negative 5? Oops. Okay, so square root of, let me just write it like that, square root of x equals negative 5. So we go through our procedure. Well, this is a square root. So if I square both sides, <coughs> I should undo the square root, which gives me x. And negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Now, when we go back to check it, we go back to run a check, and that would be my original problem was the square root of my answer equals a negative 5. And I'm shocked when I put a 25 in here because the square root of 25 is 5, which clearly does not equal negative 5. So this answer that I actually got, we would call it, we'd cross it out and call it extraneous. So that's called an extraneous solution. <clears throat> so really the solution is no solution in this case. And <clears throat> you might actually, um, when the problems are simple and you start having enough experience with this, you'll realize that that negative right there, whoops, <clears throat> that negative that was squared, <clears throat> oh boy, when you square both sides of the equation, you're squaring a negative and turning it into a positive, which is causing this extraneous solution. So when the problems are simple and easy enough, you could actually see it coming. But when the problems start getting more difficult of this procedure that we're doing, like maybe something like in this area, like this one, maybe 11, 12, um, that, you know, these kind of problems, it's too hard just to identify when there's an extraneous just by looking at it. You have to check. So we basically say you should always check anytime you square both sides of an equation. Anytime you raise both sides of an equation to a power is what they say you should check. Now, I kind of want to give you, I think, the full story, and that is 
it's really even powers is it's causing the problem, right? Because when you raise it to a second power, that's negative times a negative, which makes it positive. Um, if you add it to the fourth power, that would be four negatives being multiplied, which becomes positive. But if you had the cube root of x equals, let's say, negative 8, that's not going to be a problem because when you raise it to the third power, actually, let's make it negative 2 so the numbers stay nice and tiny. So let's make the problem. Ah, let's start over again. Darn it. Just so you get, get a sense of how I'm starting this problem. The cube root of x equals, let's say, negative 2. So what's the logic? The index is 3. So to undo that index of 3, raise it to the third power. If I do that to the left, I have to do it to the right. And um, once we have a power of 3, index of 3, out comes the x. And um, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. And you can see when we go back to run a check, go back to run a check, the cube root of negative 8, does that in fact equal negative 2? And yes, it does. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, so that works out. So really, it is when you raise a power of an even power on both sides of the equation, uh, you better check. You have to check. If you don't check, you're really not doing the full procedure of the problem um, because you might miss some extraneous solutions, which are solutions that popped up after we squared both sides and this is a better example right here. We squared both sides, which x equals 25 popped up as a solution, but that does not work. It's extraneous. Cross it out. There's no solution there. Now, it's possible you have one extraneous solution and one solution that works. Well, in that case, you have a solution, right? But in this case, there was only one, and it didn't work, so no solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at, um, at least start off with some of these easier ones. Remember, once again, that logic here is... The index is 2, so if I square it the left and right, well, out comes the base of x, and 1 squared is 1. So that is done, but remember, we do have to check. So we go ahead and run our check. Our check is to simply grab the original problem and see if it in fact, in fact works when we put in our solution of 1. And the square root of 1 is 1, and that equals 1, so that does work. So our answer is x equals 1. Number 2, once again, you're seeing this index is 2. So the idea is, why don't we undo an index of 2 by squaring, raising it to the second power? We're going to have to do both sides. And out comes the radicand of x minus 7. Um, then on the right, we have 21 squared. 21 times 21 is 441. And we add 7 to both sides. I think we probably can start doing this, adding 7 in our head. Probably don't have to write it down. We get x equals 448. So the question is, 448 correct? We have to check it. We have to check it. It's part of the procedure. If I was, if you're doing this problem um, on a written test, I would, always, I would be looking for the check because that is part of this procedure. Um, the original problem is the square root of x minus 7, and that is supposed to equal 21. So let's run our check. What was our answer? Our answer was right here at, ooh, it's not going to fit. Um, I should have made that bigger. The answer, though, was 4. The answer was, or is, our checking 448, and that says minus 7. So 448 minus 7 gives us 441. The square root of 441 is 21, which checks perfectly. So x equals 448 is the solution. Number 3. Okay. Well, don't panic. It's still the same idea. It's a square root. How do you undo a square root? You square. If I do that on the left, I have to do it on the right. When you square a square root, out comes the radicand inside, which is 3t plus 16 equals 7 squared, which is 49. You know, you could put a little star here in reminding yourself that this new equation is a whole heck of a lot easier to solve, but it might produce extraneous solutions, so you better check. Okay, we're going to go ahead and subtract 16 from both sides of the equation. This gives us, whoops, this gives us 3t equals, uh, what is it, 49 minus 16, which is 33. 
and then finally divide by 3, and we have a possible solution of 11. You better check it. So we go here, over here and run a check. We're looking for the square root of 3 times my answer plus 16. Does that, in fact, equal 7? I don't know. Let's try it. We're going to put 11 in and simplify it. 3 times 11 is 33. And 33 plus 16 is 49. That was supposed to be square root right there. And the square root of 49 is 7, which perfectly matches with my right. Check, check, check. This is the answer. t equals 11. Number 4. We see a square root. So we know we could undo the square root by squaring. We square the left. We square the right. The square undoes the square root, leaving us this radicand of 2x plus 3. Negative 2 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. We subtract 3 on both sides. 2x equals 1. Divide by 2. We have a possible answer of a half. Let's check it out. We go over here to check. The original problem was 2 times my answer plus 3. Does that, in fact, equal negative 2? Well, the answer I got was a half. So I'm going to plug it in for x. Half of 2, half of 2, that gives me 1. And 1 plus 3 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And does that equal negative 2? No, it does not. This is our first example of an extraneous solution. Let's cross that out. Extraneous. You don't really have to say extraneous. You could just say no solution. But for teaching purposes, no solution also, um, what's another way to say it? No solution. Empty set is another way to say it. That means no solution. With symbols, just having the braces without anything, that means no solution. Um, this is this is an extraneous extraneous solution and must be crossed out because it didn't work. Next problem. We identify this as something different. It is a cube root. So how do you undo a cube root? Well, its inverse would be cube it. Well, if I do that on the left, I have to cube the right. Now, cubing a cube root, out comes the radicand of 8t. And 4 cubed, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Of course, solving for t, divide by 8 on both sides, and t equals 8 itself. And we go ahead and run our check. Um, the square root of 8 times t, does that in fact equal 4? I don't know. Let's see, let's use a purple for, the, for our answer. 8 times 8 is 64. The square root of 64 is... Um, wait a minute, what happened here? Um, what number is this? Number 5. We got t equals... Oh, that's what's wrong. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful, because if you don't put your indices... I didn't put my indice right here, which means it's going to be a 2, and it's not supposed to be 2, it's supposed to be cube root. Not supposed to be square root. So that would screw it all up. 8 times 8 is 64, and the square root of... So the square root of 64 is 8, but the cube root of 64, the cube root of 64 is actually 4, which means this does work. Whew, almost messed that one up. Number 6, solve the following equation. Ah, well... Um, cube root. How do I undo the cube root? Cube it. Cube both sides of the equation. Out comes the radicand of 2. T plus 40 equals 4. Subtract 40 off of both sides. We get 2t equals negative 36. Divide by 2, and t equals negative, uh, negative 18. So, or let's see. What the heck am I doing? I'm too... I need to stop doing these videos at, after midnight. It's almost 1 o'clock. At least I'm going to blame it on that again. So look at this. 
I didn't even follow my own stuff. 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4, which is what? 64. And we subtract 40 off of both sides. 64 minus 40 is 24. And um, if we divide both sides by 2, we get t equals 12. All right, that looks better. Okay, let's check that. I mean, definitely, um, you know, I told you if you cube both sides, you know, you're not going to have that extraneous situation. But let's check it because, you see, checking's not bad in any case because I would have screwed that up and checking would have caught that, right? So let's take that original problem, the cube root of 2 times t plus 40. According to this equation, that's going to equal 4. So we go ahead and put 12 in our answer and simplify it. 2 times 12 is 24. And, and 24 plus 40 is 64. Now don't forget cube root, cube root, cube root. So the cube root of 64 is 4. And the right-hand side was 4, so that checks out perfectly. t equals 12. All right, solve. Oh, well. All the other problems, notice that the notice that the radical was by itself on one side. And notice that the radical, there it is right there. There it is right there. There it is right there. The radical's all by itself on one side, on the left side. And now the radical is not by itself. It has a minus 3. When you do this procedure, you always want to isolate the radical. So you better add 3. If you don't do that, okay, I just want to tell you, if you don't do that, the pain will be severe. You will have to foil that out. Yuck. Right? You hear what I'm saying? You would literally have to go, your next step would be the square root of y plus 4, um, whoops, y plus 4 minus 3 times quantity square root of y plus 4 minus 3, and you'd have to bing, 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 bing. You do not want to do that. So we can save ourselves a lot of pain by just, get rid of this stuff, by just adding 3 on both sides of the equation. And what do we get now? Now we have the square root of y plus 4 equals 5. So much better because the square root is isolated and it is a square root, so square the left and square the right. This gives us y plus 4 equals 25. And you can see we, we have dodged a nasty situation just by isolating the square root. Subtract 4. And we have our answer of y equals 21. We squared both sides of the equation, so we better check this. Go back to the original problem. I'm just going to call this a check. Go back to the original problem of square root of my answer plus 4 minus 3. Don't go down here where you messed around with the problem. Go to the original problem because we need to check and see if something went wrong with uh, the procedure, which would produce extraneous solution, or maybe we made a human error when we we're doing the math. So we got an answer of 21, so we'll put that in, and we'll do some simplifying. 21 plus 4 is the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 equals 2. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Check, check, check. Y equals 21 is good. All right, same problem here. We need to isolate that square root. So we are going to subtract 8 off of the right and left side of the equation. We have 8 square root of x equals, what's this going to be, 64. This is number 8. This equals 64. Now what do we need to do? Well, we could square, root, square both sides to undo the square root, and that would actually work here. But since this is such a nice, you know, this is too hard to pass up, Divide both sides by 8, and we get the square root of x equals 64 divided by 8 is 8. Right? That was too hard to pass up. Now let's go ahead. Knowing that that's a square root, we can undo the square root by squaring both sides. This is going to give us x equals 8 squared. 8 times 8 is 64. Okay, well, we definitely did some squaring. We squared both sides, so we must check this solution. The original problem was 8 
times the answer, 8 times the square root of the answer, rather, plus 8 is supposed to equal 72. What was that answer again? There it is, 64. We'll put that in there, 64. Okay, simplifying this, the square root of 64 is just 8. And 8 times 8 is 64 plus 8. 64 plus 8 is 72, which is exactly what we had on the right side. So x equals 64 is a perfect answer. Okay, difference. The new difference here, the new thing that is different is we have a variable. Well, this is the same, but having a variable on the right side. That is different than the previous problems. Okay, let's go, let's go forward just as we always have. This is a square root. So how do you undo the square root? You square. So that part of the procedure is still the same. The square undoes the square root, giving us p on the left. On the right, I have 7p times 7p, which gives me 49p squared. Now, that's interesting, right? How do you solve when you have squares in an equation? You don't isolate the p. You have to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract p off of both sides. Now, those are not like terms, so it's going to be 49p squared minus p. How do you solve, like I said, when you have a square term? Well, you factor. It's set it equal to 0 and factor, correct? And everybody says, yes. So we factor out a p, 49p minus 1. We factored out that p. Now we set each factor, there's a factor of p, equal to 0. So there's a possible answer. Set this factor equal to 0. So 49p minus 1 equals 0. Add 1, 49p equals 1. Divide by 49, we're running out of space. And we get, right, p equals 1 49th. I think we better check both of those answers to see if we have anything that's extraneous. Check. The first one is just going to be the square root of my answer. It's supposed to equal 7 times my answer. First one I want to check is this 0. That sh should be easy enough. I love multiplying or finding the square root of 0. 0. 7 times 0 is 0. Check, check, check. Okay, that is definitely an answer. P equals 0. What about this kind of crazy um, P uh, equals 1 49th. Well, the original problem was the square root equals 7 times my answer. So the square root of the answer equals 7 times the answer. So I'm going to try green here. 1 49th. And then this is 1 over 49. Well, it turns out this that 1 over 49 is a perfect square, right? Because it is 1 over 7 squared. And whenever that power matches the index, out comes the base, out comes 1 7th. Now on this uh, right-hand side, we have 7 times 1 49th, and we can think of 7 as 7 over 1. And when you do that, it really jumps out that, what, that 7 goes into 7 once, and 7 goes into 49 7 times, leaving us with 1 7th which the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, so that is a check that worked. We got two answers. Don't forget, we got two answers. We got p equals 0, it checked out, and we've got p equals 1 49th, and that checked out. Okay, continuing on. Oh, how many questions do we have? We have up to 18 questions. We're a little past half at 10. So we continue with our strategy. I see a square root, so I'm going to square both sides. Once again, you have to isolate the square root, and we did. We didn't have to do it. It was already isolated, right? The square root symbol, this is the square root symbol. See, that's by itself on the left. It's isolated. We squared the left, so we must square the right. When you square a square root, out comes the radicand of x plus 20. x squared is just x squared. We have a term that has an x squared. We better set this equal to 0. So we are going to subtract out x. We're going to subtract out 20. And this leaves a 0 on our left side. Now, how do you solve a quadratic with an x squared? You factor it. 
set it equal to 0, and factor it. Well, what multiplies to negative 20? Oh, here we go again, right? Factoring. What multiplies to negative 20? If that helps, negative 20 with this little thingy, negative 20, and adds to negative 1. Well, that's going to be negative 5 times a positive 4. So x minus 5 times x plus 4. We didn't have to do any grouping or anything like that because this was a nice, easy factoring problem with that little one in front. So now we set each factor equal to 0 and solve x equals 5. Set the second factor of x plus 4 equal to 0 and solve x equals negative 4. We have two possible solutions. We must check. We squared both sides. We must check for extraneous solutions. And here we go. So the problem was the square root of my answer, uh, what was it, plus 20 equals my answer. And that square root symbol was over the whole, um, the whole problem on the left. So first possible solution, let's try it out. How about x equals 5? So 5 plus 20 gives us the square root of 25. Oops, and we're supposed to put 5 in both locations, right? Replace your, your x variable with 5. I just did that. Um, 5 plus 20 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5, and that matches perfectly with the 5 on the right. Check, check, check. This is definitely a solution. We better check uh, the next problem or the next possible solution. We go back to the original problem, square root, root of my answer plus 20, and that's supposed to equal my answer. So this time, we'll use some green to show that I'm going to substitute in a negative 4. And I simplify the left and I simplify the right. Negative 4 plus 20 is the square root of 16, which is 4. Does that, in fact, equal the right, which is negative 4? And the answer is no. This is an extraneous solution. We must cross it out. It did not work. Negative 4. In other words, negative 4 actually works for this problem, but it doesn't work for that problem, my original problem, and I want it to work for the original problem. However, I still do have one that works, x equals 5. X equals 5 works for my original problem, and so I'm happy that I have an answer. Number 10, let's go to number 11, and now they're going to start getting a little more wicked. I made this bigger to just have space. Once again, what do we do first? And everybody yells out, isolate the square root, otherwise you get a mess. So we subtract 4 on both sides, and we get the square root of 65 minus 8x equals x minus 4. We've isolated the square root. Now we still have some more complication. This is getting a little bit tougher, and I'll, you'll see why. You see a square root, so we know we have to undo that with a square. If you square the left, you must square the right, and now you've got a binomial that must be squared. It's going to be a perfect square binomial. And so that just makes the problem a little bit tougher, but the left side's not bad because Squaring a square root, out comes the radicand of 65 minus 8x. Now, how do we do this? Let's, let's take a little note. Remember the formula. You could FOIL it out, that's fine. But you, it's nice to have our formula and use our formula. It's the first term squared minus 2 times the first term times the second term plus the last term of 4 squared. So now... If we're going to write this down, it's just going to be what? x squared minus all that stuff multiplied, which is 8x. 4 squared is 16. Now, you get the same thing if you foil it out, but that ends up being much faster if you get good at it. You just actually can do it in your head. And so there we are. Now, we have an equation. We have a new equation. Remember, check, 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 star, star, star. Uh, it's a new equation that has possible solutions, we have to check the solutions to see if there's any extraneous in there. But how do we solve this? We set it equal to 0. So let's go ahead and start that process by subtracting 65 on the left and 65 on the right. And let's subtract, no, let's add 8x on the left and add 8x on the right. And here we go. We've zeroed it out on the left. The problem is this. This is number 11. 
we have zeroed it out on the left. On the right-hand side, we are going to get, uh, what is that? That's going to be, um, of course, the x's. 8, negative 8 x and positive 8 x is 0 out. Leaves me with x squared. And 16 minus 65 is a negative 49. Well, isn't that special? That is a diff difference. There's a perfect square there. There's a perfect square there. This guy factors down to x plus 7 times x minus 7. So therefore, set each factor equal to 0. So x equals negative 7. Or set the second factor equal to 0. x equals positive 7. Of course, we must check this out. So we will do our check over here. What was that original problem? Write a check right there. Original problem said the square root of 65 minus 8 times my answer plus 4 must equal my answer x. So we go ahead, maybe I zoom out a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, if I zoom out like that, I'll never be able to write cleanly that small. But um, I think we can compromise right there. So let's take a negative 7 first and try it. Okay, so on this particular problem, you can see this is becoming a, a bit involved, isn't it? Some of these problems get a little bit tougher, but right now we are checking. So we're on the downside of this whole thing. So we have negative 8 times a negative. So this is a negative times a negative. So we've got 65 plus 56. This is, of course, under a square root. We got the 4 there. So 65 plus 56 is 121, and that's the square root. And the square root of 121 is beautiful. It's 11. And 11 plus 4 is 15. And whoops, on the right-hand side, we have a negative 7. This is clearly not going to work. We have just shown that negative 7 is extraneous and will not work. Let's try <clears throat> our last check. Let's try our last check with, so we write that equation down again, 65 minus 8 times my answer plus 4 equals my answer. So let's try a green, 7. All right, so now we have um, the square root of 65 and a negative 8 times 7 is minus 56 this time instead of plus, minus 56 plus 4. So now we have this, 65 minus 56, which gives us the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is beautiful. That's just going to make a 3. 3 plus 4 is 7, and 7, in fact, matches the right of 7. So awesome, we did get one solution. One of them was extraneous, it gets crossed out, and the other one is valid, and we write down the valid solution. X equals seven is the final solution. Okay, what else do we have here? Well, that looks like a mess. Well, remember, we have to isolate our square root, and there's the square root. So we must subtract six off of both sides. This is gonna give us square root of W squared minus, oops, yeah, the square root of w squared minus 5 equals w minus 1. You identify that this is a square root, so we square to undo that. Square both sides. This gives us the radicand inside, which is w squared minus 5. Of course, this is a nice perfect square binomial, which has a nice little formula of take the first term w and square it. Take the middle term, double it, and then it's w times 1, a times b, plus the last term, 1 squared. So this is just w squared minus 2w plus 1. Once again, you'd get that same thing if you just went ahead and foiled that out. Okay? As you guys like to call it foil. I like to call it extended distribution. Anyhow, this is w squared minus 2w plus 1. Now, we have a squared term, a quadratic, so we set it equal to 0. 
And oh, look at that, some beautiful things happen. If I subtract W on both sides, they just zero out. How awesome is that? And if I add five, because I'm trying to set it equal to zero, what do we get? Well, we get zero on the left. We get negative two W plus six. Okay, well that is now, we don't have a square term anymore. So now the game is isolate W. So I'm going to add 2w on both sides. So it gets 2w equals 6 divided by 2. And look at that. Just like that, I've got a possible solution. I squared both sides, so I better double check. Check. Run a check. Now, what's the problem here? i got to zoom out. The original problem was the square root of my answer squared minus 5. Plus 6 equals my answer plus so I just copy down that original problem, and I'm going to replace w equals 3 with, so w with 3. Okay, so I got 3 squared, which is 9, 9 minus 5, 9 minus 5 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 6 is 8. How do we turn out on the right-hand side? 3 plus 5 is 8. Check. We just proved that w equals 3. Good to go. Okay, that was 12. Let's look at number 13. Oh, this is new. Square roots on both sides. Well, square, square roots on both sides can, can be a nightmare, but when you don't have any other terms like that with it, it's actually easier. Because all we have to do is, well, that's square root and that's square root. So what do you think you're going to do to undo it? Square the left, square the right. And since it's a perfect, it's a nice square root by itself, out comes the radicand x plus 7. Out comes the radicand 2x plus 3. Turns out to be a real easy problem. We're just going to subtract x on both sides, which just gives me x plus 3 on the right, 7 on the left. Subtract 3. This is actually... Not bad at all. x equals 4. I did square both sides, so I must check for extraneous solutions. My original problem was the square root of my answer plus 7 is supposed to equal the square root of 2 times my answer plus 3. What was the answer? 4. 4. So I put 4 in 4x, and I try to see if the left actually equals the right. Um, 4 plus 7 is the square root of 11. That's not a perfect square. That makes you a little nervous. Well, what happens over here? 2 times 4 is 8. And 8 plus 3 is 11. Yay! Square root 11 equals square root 11, which means the left equals right, which means 4 is the proper and correct answer. Number 14. We're getting there. Hmm, that's something different, huh? Well, we have radicals on both sides. We don't have these extra terms, which once, what does that do? Well, that means you'd have to raise it to the third power and, and distribute, 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 distribute. It would be a nightmare. Thank goodness that that is not the case. Well, there are cube roots on both sides. So how do you undo a cube root? You cube. You cube it. How do you undo a cube? Well, since you cube the left side, you are forced to cube the right side, but they're both cube roots, so it works out perfectly. We're left with the radicand of 9x minus 3. We're left with the radicand of 8x minus 17. Let's go ahead and solve for x. Subtract 8x on both sides, which just gives us x minus 3 equals negative 17. You add 3 on both sides. x equals negative 14. Well, let's see if this is going to work. This is number 14. X equals negative 14. We better check. We better check is what the book wants to check anytime you raise the power. I know that odd powers don't have the same problems as even powers, but we're going to check this. The problem is the cube root of 9 times my answer minus 3 is supposed to equal the cube root of 8 times my answer minus 17 is what the original problem said. Whoops. Yeah, it is all over there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see. What did we get? We got a negative 14. Let's see what happens. 
So, uh, this is number 14. We got a 9 times negative 14 is negative 126 minus 3. Negative 126 minus 3 is negative 1, 129. Now, these are cube roots. Um, and we can see if that will break down. But let's see what we have on the right. If we have an identical match, we don't have to worry about it. 8 times negative 14, well, that's going to give us the cube root of negative 112 minus 17. And the cube root, uh, so negative 112 minus 17 is negative 129. Well, they're both the cube root of negative 129, which is, they are the same, right? They're equivalent, so that works. Um, realize, you might, you might be wondering, well, what about that negative? But it's a cube root, right? It's an odd power, so the negative is not an issue at all. This is the answer right here, x equals negative 14. Uh, let's go. Number 15 is next. Number 15. Okay, now here's where it gets a little bit nastier. We have a square root on the left and a square root on the right. Which one do you isolate? You always isolate the nastier square root, the radicin and the square root. And I would say that this one is definitely nastier, so you want to isolate the nastier one. Because how do you undo, how do you undo, um, whoops, how do you undo a square root? Come on now. How do you undo a square root? Well, you square. So you want the nastiest radicand to be isolated because, you know, when you uh, square a square root, out comes a radicand. So you want the nasty one to have this clean uh, radicand that comes out. Out comes the radicand of 2x plus 9. Well, over here we have a perfect square. You can foil that out if you want. I'm going to continue to use my nice little um, special product, which just says, right, when you have a perfect square binomial, it's just going to be the first term squared. The middle term is going to be 2 times the first term, 3 times the second term, which is square root of x. And the last term here is just going to be the second term, which is square root of x, squared. So that just simplifies down to 3 squared is 9 plus um, 2 times 3 is 6 root x, and square root of x squared, oh, power and index match, out comes an x. So this is what we have on the left, on the right-hand side, is 9 plus 6 square root of x plus x. So this is why this problem is nasty. We squared both sides, and yet still we have ah, a square root. So guess what we have to do? We have to isolate the square root and go again. So that's why this is kind of a pain. So let's isolate the square root by subtracting 9 on both sides. Well, that was nice. They both zero out. And also, let's subtract x on both sides. Well, that didn't zero out, but that's okay. We have um, left on the right, left on the right. We have on the right 6 square root of x. And on the left, we just have 2x minus x is just x. Okay, now, um, you could say I totally want to isolate that square root and divide by 6, but I don't think so. That's going to make a fraction on the left. Let's not do that. We don't, you don't have to. You want to isolate it with other terms, right? If there, was, if there happened to be like a plus 4, you want to get that out of there. But if it's multiplied by something, a factor of it, multiplied by 6, if it doesn't cleanly... Divide out on both sides. I would just leave it there. So now, once again, we've got to do it again, right? We squared both sides in green. we got to do it again. We're going to square the right to get rid of the square root because that is a square root. And we must square the left. So basically, we have 6 square root of x. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. And square root of x times square root of x is just x. On the left, we have x squared. How do you solve an equation with an x squared? Well, you set it equal to 0, so we have to subtract 36 on both sides, 36x rather. You set it equal to 0. Then you factor out the common x. Then you set each factor equal to 0. Set this factor, x minus 36, equal to 0. So there's a possible answer, and x equals 36 is a possible answer. 
So we go over here and we say, well, let's run a check. Let's run a check. Where was that? The original problem, way up there. Boy, this thing has been squared twice. We definitely need to check this thing for extraneous solutions. Original problem was 2 times the answer plus 9 equals 3 times, whoops, equals 3 plus the square root of that answer. What do we get for an answer? We got two answers. We've got to check this twice. First answer, we're going to try a 0. And you check, you check 36, so I'll do 0. No, I'm just kidding. 0 is easy one, right? 2 times 0 is 0. This leaves us with the square root of 9, which is 3. Over here, square root of 0 is 0. 3 plus 0 is 3. Yay! That definitely checked out. Where did that come from? That came from the 0. This is a valid answer. Yay, we got 1. What about the next one? Let's run a check again. And on this one, so the, the, the actual original equation, once again, was the square root of 2 times my answer plus 9. Better equal 3 times, I'm sorry, 3 plus the square root of my answer. We're going to see if this holds true. What was another possible? Well, that was 36. Okay, so as we're doing this problem, we're running this check. We've got 2 times 36. We have 2 times 36, which is 72 plus 9. 72 plus 9, well, that gives us 81. And the square root of 81 is certainly nice. It's just a 9. Let's see what happens over here. What's the square root of 36? That's 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. And the left equals the right. We end up getting two answers this time. No extraneous answers. We got two solutions, and there they are. Both of those solutions, when put into the original problem, we showed works. All right. And now we're down to how many more problems? Oh, darn it. I thought we were almost done. We are getting close, but okay. I thought we had one more. No. So anyhow, here we are. Two square roots. You must isolate the more complicated square root, and really either one of them, x plus 1 as a radicand or x minus 6, they, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to, because they're really not, they're, there's not really a complicated one. I'm just going to go ahead and add square root of x minus 6 to both sides because um, I just don't want a negative in front of there. That's the only reason I'm doing that, because the radicands are both really not too complicated. That, of course, zeroes out. Now what do we have? We've got the square root of x plus 1 on the left. We've got 1 plus the square root of x minus 6. This is going to be a little nasty because we have to square root. We have to square the left and square the right. Well, the isolated square root, no problem because out pops the radicand of x plus 1. But this guy must be multiplied. Either foil it or use our nice little special formula, which, you know, I guess I'll write it again up here, but it is a plus b quantity squared, which equals a squared plus 2ab, 2 times a times b, plus b squared. So we can follow, learn our lesson here. What is a? Well, a is the first term, right? So 1 squared plus 2 times a, which is 1, times this nasty thing right here would be considered the b. <laughs> so that's not good. That's going to be the square root of x minus 6. And then finally, plus b squared. Well, that's that nasty thing again, square root of x minus 6. But it gets squared. It gets squared. And so some nice things happen when you square a square root, right? So let's go. 1 squared is 1. 2 times 1 is 2, square root of x minus 6. And over here, when you square a square root, out comes the radicand of plus x minus 6. Well, we might as well combine some like terms here, like how about negative 6 and 1. So that just makes, let's write it down over here. 1 and a negative 6 is negative 5. We've got plus 2 square root of x minus 6 plus x. This is definitely the nasty problem so far. Because after all that junk, I still have a dang square root, right? So what we have to do, 
we've got to isolate the square root again. Where's the square root? You guys see it? There it is. Isolate that thing. So I'm going to add 5 on the right, which makes me add 5 on the left. And I'm going to subtract x on the right, which makes me subtract x on the left. So what do I have left? 1 plus 5 is 6. Of course, that zeroes out. That zeroes out. I'm left with 2, square root of x minus 6. Now, last time I didn't divide by, by 2, but since 6 is divisible by 2, why not just divide by 2? And now we've got the square root of x minus 6. What I mean last time? Let me go back to it. I'm not sure if you're catching what I'm saying. Last time I had a 6 in front of the square root, and I did not divide it. That's because x divided by 6 is nastier than just leaving the 6. But on this one, I have this 2 left over in front. But because 6 is divisible by 2, 6 divided by 2 is just 3, well, that's easier, easy enough just to take care of it there and simplify even further. I want to simplify it further because our next step is to do what? Well, I've got this square root. How do I undo it? Square it. Square the right, square the left. 3 squared is 9. Squaring a square root, out comes a radical radicand of x minus 6. Add 6 to both sides to solve for x, and we have got this nasty problem. 9 plus 6 is 15. Wow, okay. Well, I hope I hope that I hope that's uh I hope that's gonna actually be a be an answer. Wouldn't that be a bummer if that was uh actually turned out to be um extraneous? Well, we still get the answer right though, so you know you still get full credit. So, you know, you can't cry too loud, but but you know, we did all that work, it'd be nice to have an actual answer. Well, we squared here, and we squared here, so we have to check. We have to check. What's the original problem? Nasty. Square root of x plus 1. What else? Minus. Let me just zoom out so I can see both. Here it is right here. I'm trying to copy that down. Square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of my answer x minus 6 equals 1. So now I want to see, is this actually going to check out? What was the answer? 15. Put 15 in for the variable of x and see if the left side equals the right side. 15 plus 1 is 16, so the square root is 16. 15 minus 6, 15 minus 6 is 9. Square root of, square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 9 is 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 equals 1. Check. And after all that work, we for sure have an answer that is checked. It's definitely not extraneous. We're good to go. x equals 15, and we move on to 17. I think we just have two more, 17 and 18. Yes, I'm excited. Oh, well, we change it up. Now, now we have a rational exponent. See that guy right there? Now, you have two ways to deal with this. You could remember that that rational one-half exponent just means the square root of 3x plus 10 raised to the first power, but you don't need to show that, right? Because just raised to the first power equals 4. And then we're back to actually an easy problem, square both sides. But I'm going to say you don't even need to do that. You can just leave it in its fractional form or rational exponential form and you just raise this thing up to what power is going to turn a one-half into one? Well, two, right? Two times one-half is just one. So we raise the left side to two and the right side by two. And once again, when you multiply one-half times two, you get one. So that just becomes one, which leaves us with 3x, just like the radicand, um, squaring a square root leaves us with the radicand, we have the same exact um, step, right? We have the same exact next step. 4 squared is 16. Oh, here we go. So subtract. So that wasn't too bad, actually, at all. We've got 3x equals 16 minus 10 is 6. Divide by 3. And x equals 2. You better check it. Check for extraneous solutions. What was that original problem? 3 times my answer plus 10. That all was raised to the one-half power, and it's supposed to equal 4. What was my answer? I forgot already. 2. Let's check it. 2. Let's check 2. 
3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 10 is 16. 16 to the 1 half is the same as the square root of 16, which is just 4. That's exactly what I had on the right. So that checks out. So therefore, x equals 2. So that's what we've got going there. And let's see. This is the last problem. Yay! Last problem, 18. So we're going to zoom in on 18. Okay, you can change this from radical, um, from a rational exponent to a radical, but I really don't see the real need for that because if I raise this left side to the fourth power, I know that one fourth times four equals one, which and I, if, I, if I raise the left to the fourth power, I must raise the right to the fourth power, and it just makes the power one, so we're left with six x minus four on the left, and the same over here, 3x plus 5, 3x plus 5 to the first power on the right, which, right, don't have to write, you don't have to show the first power, right, because that's, raise the first power is not going to change the number. So that is simplified that way. And we want to solve for x. Subtract 3 on both sides, leaves me with 3x minus 4 equals 5. How about if I add 4 to both sides, and that gives me 3x equals 9. Divide by 3, and yay, we're almost there. x equals 3. Let's check that problem. Now, checking it is, gee, almost nastier than anything else here because look at that. It's not that bad. We're just not used to seeing these rational exponents too often. But that just says take 6 times my answer minus 4, raise it to the 1 fourth power. That better equal 3 times my answer plus 5, raise it to the 1 fourth power. Let's see if, in fact, our answer is a valid answer. We're trying 3. So we put 3 into the original equation, and away we go. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 minus 4 is 14 to the 1 fourth. <laughs> well, 14 is not a perfect fourth power. We can't write it as a rewrite it as a fourth power. That's okay. If the left, if the right hand side is 14 to the 1 fourth, it's, it's still the same number. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 5 is 14 to the 1 fourth power. And I, even though those are kind of nasty numbers, the left definitely equals right. And so I'm happy when that happens. X equals 3, and we are finished. We have a solution for number 18, and we are done. Okay, Math 120 students, I hope that helped out, and we are signing off. I hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.